Let me guess, you signed up for every free lead magnet and binged on every marketing YouTube video and thought, what am I missing? Why isn't my business exploding like that? Well, I can tell you, you're not alone. Whether you're just getting started or have an established business, entrepreneurship can be really lonely, but it doesn't have to be. Overcoming your fear of launching or building your personal brand or figuring out how to scale, it shouldn't be holding you back. It should be empowering you. On this podcast, we're going to deep dive into the mechanics of what it takes to build your brand, make your mark, and stake your claim in the digital marketing space. I'll be chatting with people from all walks of life and stages in their careers. I will be getting inspiration from real experts who will share their actual strategies and techniques to grow loyal and raving followings and sell more stuff. This is entrepreneurship from people who are already there making it happen. My name is Jeff Mendelson. Join me and welcome to the One Big Tip Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Jeff Mendelson, and this is the One Big Tip Podcast. And today, I am very pleased to have Jen McFarland on the line. Jen is the founder of the Women Conquer Business uh, company located in Portland, Oregon. And she does some amazing stuff with helping out small businesses in her local community. So, Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. So, Jen, we were talking before the show. You, uh, You actually have a pretty good... Uh, a pretty good deal set up right now. You said with the city of Portland Mm -hmm. that you are the person that they go to to help small businesses establish themselves uh, online and on the internet. I was wondering if you could take a few minutes to talk a little bit about that and what makes you amazing at doing it. Sure. Yeah, that's uh, one of my bigger contracts that I have right now is with Prosper Portland. It's an agency within the city of Portland, and they have an inclusive business network um, where they help new businesses and businesses that are emerging, emerging um, run by women and people of color in our community. The model that we use was developed developed um, by David Mim. He used to have a company called Get Listed, and he sold it to Moz and was a vice president at Moz for a while. And then he's taken it and we've worked on it together to kind of adapt little things so that we can consult with really small businesses and help them get started with everything that they need to show up as a local business in Portland, Oregon. What we found is that so many people want to do the right thing, but they're really not sure what that is. There's a lot of confusion and a lot of noise about what really works if you're a local business just trying to get some traction online. So what we've done really is streamlined the process so that they don't have as much noise and they have a few key areas that they can really work on. Um, And we meet with the business to get started and kind of give them a roadmap. And then we meet with them at the end to make sure that they've implemented things or if they have any questions or things like that. And we found that it's a really good process for these small businesses, particularly that don't have a big budget, that just really need to get ready so that they're able to work with somebody like you, Jeff, and take that then to the next level. So that's really interesting. And that really segues into your one big tip is that you have three pillars or three foundational pieces that every business needs in order to attack a project like this, right? Because you need to be able to cut through the noise, but you also need to be able to execute on that, right? You need to be able to to take that vision. And, you know, keep in mind, these are already established businesses, right? That just need to take it to the next level. Uh, Can you please tell us what your one big tip is and how to apply that to a business that wants to get online? Sure. So what I'm what I'm really passionate about, I have a master's degree in leadership and mass in management. I have a master's degree in leadership and management. And then I worked for 10 years in a corporate setting on these large scale projects. So millions of dollars, so many customers. Um, And then I also have a background in digital marketing. So it's like how, if you're a polymath, do you like knit together all of these interests and all of this experience? And what I realized is that really everybody needs these three foundational things in order to really make their business go forward. One is to have some sort of means to lead. Like even if it's just a solopreneur, you still have to be able to lead yourself. So developing some strong leadership skills so that you're able to move work forward, get some things done and, and help people avoid burnout, build positive relationships with some of your partners, things like that. Then the second one is, some strategic project planning. And what that means is you maybe have a vision and a mission, but then it might be completely disconnected from 
say your goals or the tasks that you're doing all of the time. So when I worked, so I also have a background in the Peace Corps and Peace Corps, huh? when I, when I, yeah, I was in the Peace Corps in Kazakhstan. So we were working on crazy projects. It's actually when I realized that I really loved projects and, and helping move initiatives forward that were really desperately needed by people. You know, I wasn't coming in and saying what the project was. I was like, what do you want to get done? <laughs> and we would just figure, figure out how to do it. So fundamentally that is, that's really what I'm all about. So when it comes to like a strategic project planning, it really is about what is your core mission and how are you going to deliver it? But what we have oftentimes among entrepreneurs and small businesses is there's a disconnect. And then that's what causes things like mission drift, um, where you're kind of working on something that's really not connected to what is core to your business. So what I've done is I work in a very specific way um, that ties together things like your mis mission and your vision to the goals for like the most important initiatives in your business, all the way down to the tasks. So when you think about um, you know, if you have programs and services and things like that, those are tied to your goals. But oftentimes people end up working on a lot of tasks that maybe aren't serving the goals, let alone the mission or the vision. So what I do is I help people really understand what it is that they could be doing and how to execute on these most important projects and maybe some of the things that they need to let go of so that they're able to be more successful and again, it is about kind of getting rid of the noise, you know, in their own business. So they're working on the tactical solutions that are the most important for them. The last key is digital marketing, which as we talked about, you know, I have the one contract where I'm helping small businesses um, with digital marketing, but there are a lot of people who just um, kind of follow their bliss when it comes to digital marketing. And they're worried about things that are much more advanced than what it is that could really help people move forward. So I kind of take a lot of my own experience and the experience with the city of Portland and all of this, you know, it's just really good data about what are some of the common gaps that a lot of businesses have. And we make sure that every business has that strong foundation um, so that then when they go to pay for marketing, um, they're actually well positioned for that. But I think you need to have all three. You need to be able to lead and then execute on the projects that are most critical for your business and then show up online in a way that really reflects where your business is at. And that's my hot tip. That is, that is amazing. But let me ask something. So all three of those, right, the, the leadership, the project management, and the digital marketing, those all, like you have a you have a specific process for each one of them, right? In terms of, I mean, let's just break this down real quick. Do you have like an app or some kind of, um, or some kind of a uh, process that you would use that encompasses all three, or do you have like an, like an app suggestion for each or, you know, when I say app, I, you know, wow. some kind of software, you know, something that they can use to help them plan and keep everyone on task. Yeah. So, you know, I, I hesitate around making like a real app suggestion on project planning, but I will say that, you know, one that I actually love is called is monday.com. I would say that, you know, there are just different ways of doing it. I think that when you go to, you know, Slack, people like Slack because they can communicate. I think it's a little light on kind of some of the planning and executing on things. I think it really depends on your organization. I think that you need to look at, what is the best way to move things forward? So if you're the leader and you have a team, you know, you have to figure out the best way to communicate with each other because one of the keys to um, executing on any project is to make sure that people are staying on top of things, that everybody's talking to everybody else and they're actually doing what they say they're gonna do. So it could be, you know, just having, um, you know, a Kanban board so you could use like Trello or something and then just making sure everybody's really invested in the process of making sure that the work gets moving forward. Um, I like monday.com because it really is a team, you know, and I think Asana is another one that's a really good one for just getting a team really invested. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that whatever it is, people need to be able to communicate, make changes, and then you have to have some sort of check to make sure that everybody's actually doing their part. You know, one of the things that happens too often is the communication falls apart. I've seen it so many times on large projects. And then it's like the wheels come off as soon as people stop talking to each other. So, um, 
so in terms of that, I will say that if you are going to go into any sort of project, you have to be really clear about the problem that you solve and then what is the outcome? What would it look like if that project succeeded? Those are two of the big key questions that you don't need an app for that. <laughs> you can just ask those questions before you start anything and really explore like what it is that, that you want as an outcome. Too often people skip ahead actually to how are we gonna market this thing? <laughs> but if you don't even know what pro what's the problem out there and how are we going to solve it? And what will it look like when everything goes well? You can't market yet. You know, some of these things have to happen in stages. So um, what's the problem that you're solving and, and what does success look like? You know, sometimes even the simplest definition is probably the right one. Yeah. In that, you know, once you once you envision what the end goal is, uh, you know, you'll have a much better way to pick out the materials or pick out the process that you're going to need in order to get there. So very cool. Yeah, when I when I talk to people about apps, because it, it comes up a lot. I mean, for me, it's like, okay, what how what's working now? And because if something is broken, don't move it to an app. That's just going to make it worse. So, what's working now? What isn't working now? Fix that, and then find something online that looks close to that. Agreed. Very cool. Thank you very much for that, Jen. Can you please tell people where they can find you if they want to learn more about about women conquer uh, women who conquer business? Yeah, so you can find me at jenmcfarland.com. That's Jen with one N. Um, I have Women Conquer Business and then the Women Conquer Business podcast. And the answer is yes, I work with men too. You just have to be cool with women being a part of the business world. <laughs> so uh, jenmcfarland.com, you will find uh, blog posts, videos, podcast um, episodes. I've had my show for two years. So there's a lot of really great content there. Um, and then I also have a lot of free guides and help you through, you know, these different pillars of business. So um, please check it out. Um, we've put a lot of work into it. It's, it's pretty cool. All right, cool stuff. Jen, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to speak with us. Sure, thank you so much for having me.